In this video, I'll show you how a simple sequin dress can become a super sparkly background. Hello, I'm Gavin Hoey, and you're watching Adorama TV, brought to you by Adorama, the camera store that's got everything for us photographers. So recently I was having a bit of a clear out in the studio, and I came across this rather nice piece of sequined fabric. And then I remembered why I wanted to get rid of it, because the last time I tried to use it, it was a real problem to light. The sequins just bounced light absolutely everywhere, there was hot spots and sparkles all over the place. But then I thought, don't ignore the problem, embrace the problem, embrace the sparkly effect. By turning this into a dress somehow, I can bounce light off the sequins and create an amazing sparkly background. But the first thing I need to do is to work out what sort of light will create the look I'm going for. So let's get a model in, let's get some light set, let's get shooting. So it's great to have Beth back in the studio. Beth's gonna be the model for this shoot. And as you can see, she's fully decked out in very sparkly attire. Now, before we set up the main lights and take some pictures of Beth, what sort of light do I need? And really basic, do I need a big light source or a small light source? Well, remember, we're gonna embrace the sparkle. I want lots of sparkle to be seen, not necessarily by the cameras, but reflected onto the background. Now, I could use small or big light sources, and before we set them up, I've got some easy ones to test with. So I've got my small torch and a slightly bigger rotor light LED. Let's start with the small torch first. If I shine the small torch onto Beth, hopefully you can see that on the background we have some lovely sparkles bouncing off the little tiny mirrors that are the sequins and giving us that fantastic sparkly background. That works really well. So that's a small light source, so surely a big light source will be even better. Well, let's find out. Let's get the Neo 2 from Rotolite, turn that on, and we'll pop it in the same place. And it doesn't really do the same job. Now, it's got nothing to do with the light manufacturer. It's got everything to do with the spread of the light source. So small light, lots of sparkles, bigger light, less sparkles. And we're going to use both of these as we embrace the sparkly aspect of this shoot. So let's get some bigger lights set up. Let's get shooting. So I'm going to try several different light setups to get a variety of effects. The first one I'm going to do is just your standard key light at 45 degrees, elevated in the air with a nice size softbox. Now this should put some great light on Beth, but I've got a grid on the softbox and that should help to direct the light this way and keep it off the background. Now to see the sparkles, I need a dark background, which is why we have this mid gray here. So with just this simple light setup, I should get a nice dark background, but no sparkles. That's the theory. Let's try it and find out. Okay, Beth, here we go. And as you can see, that looks great light on Beth, but it looks really dark in the background. So theory works. So how am I gonna get any sparkles on the background? Well, for this to work, you have to think about the direction of light. So if I light Beth from the front with a small light source, all the sparkles are gonna go out the front. They just bounce off in the opposite direction to the light. So if I want sparkles on my background, I have to light Beth from behind. So I've got a second Evolve 200, and I've got it in a snoot. Now the snoot should give us that small point of light, which I can pop in behind Beth, pointing at her back. Now the back of her dress is covered in the same sparkles as the front of the dress. That should work really well, but what power do I need that on? Well, there's no good metering it, because you've got to trial and error this to see what works. So I've started somewhere in the middle, 1 16th power. Let's take a picture like this, see how it looks. Okay, Beth, here we go. So looking at the pictures, they look basically the same. So either one or two things happened. Either my theory doesn't work, or there's just not enough light out of that backlight to see anything. That's what I'm hoping, because we're only on 1 16th power. Let's add two more stops to the light. Let's go up to 1 8th, then 1 quarter. That's two more stops of light. Let's see if we see anything now. Here we go. And again, and last one. And yes, we do. There is the hint of something happening back there which means the brighter I make this background light, the brighter the sparkles are gonna be. Pretty simple when you think about it. So let's pop it onto full power. Let's go all about one, one, full power, and have a look at this.
Oh, that looks incredible. <laughs> Those sparkles really are there. They look fantastic. And as Beth moves, every shot is slightly different. That's one of the joys of this technique. So that looks really good and it works. But do you need a big softbox? Well, I said the size of the light will have an impact on the shot. So let's see what happens if we change this softbox to something a little smaller. So I've changed the softbox for a small reflector and inside of that is a honeycomb grid. But not just any honeycomb grid, it's a really tight 10 degree grid. That should mean that the light that comes out is going to be very small and should just hit Beth in the face, which means the rest of her dress, whilst it won't be black, it will be darker. Let's see how this looks. I've already metered this out, it's f2.8 still, nothing's changed from last time but the light is dramatically different with that lovely tight beam of light. So that looks really good and works really well and it's a simple two light setup. But what if you had a third light with another snoot? Well, let's set that up and see how that looks. So what I've got is a third light with a second snoot, and I only have really a couple of snoots, so it's not a matching snoot. This is a mag mod snoot, but the effect is gonna be exactly the same. It doesn't matter on the light modifier, the light modifiers work whatever brand you have. So the idea is I'm gonna shine these at the same angle, more or less, onto the back of Beth, but avoiding getting any spill onto the paper background because we'll lose the effect. If you remember right at the beginning when we had the LED lights, if we got spill onto the background, we lost the glittery effect. So that's the idea. They are both on their maximum power. The light above Beth is on its minimum power. Let's take a shot like this and see how it looks. Now when we do that, we can see it works really well with the sparkles, that looks fantastic. But when Beth has her hands down, she has her hand in the light. And because those lights are on maximum power, it kind of looks a little bit weird. So we have to be a little bit more careful with the posing and say to Beth, Beth, you can pop your hands behind your back, you can have them up in the air, but not by your sides. Okay, so that's the idea. Let's take a few pictures like this and see how it looks. So that looks absolutely fantastic, but of course the pictures always need a bit of post-processing, so let's get one of these pictures into Photoshop, and I'm gonna do that right now. The few enhancements I need to make to the images are down to two things. It was the styling that I used and the light that was in the shot. So let's have a look at one of the pictures and see what I do. So this is the image I want to edit, and if you have a really close look at Beth's headdress here, you can see how it was made. It is bamboo skewers hot glued onto a child's headband. And the result, well, maybe I went a little bit over the top with the hot glue, because there's a few areas where it's gone a little bit too much. And I ran out of silver paint, I really did. So there are some areas here which shouldn't really be there, and so on. Now I could spend longer fine tuning that, but there's another area I want to do here, which is Beth's, well, what should we call it, bracelet and necklace. Well, they're held together by some double-sided tape. They were literally just things we had lying around the studio. They need to be removed because they look wrong. So I'll get the healing brush tool and I'll sample by holding the Alt key or the Option key on a Mac, an undamaged area, and then we'll just paint that over the bit where we can see the tape. There we are, and uh, just doing it roughly for speed, but the end result is pretty good. Now, it comes down to speed and result. The more time you put into cloning anything, the better the results will be. That looks fine, but there's another problem I need to deal with, which is down to the lighting. So the lighting of this image caused an interesting side effect. 
When you have a very strong backlight, you will see a lot more stray hairs than you would see normally. And that's perfectly normal. I was expecting it, I was ready for it. But yes, there are lots of really bright backlit stray hairs, which all need to be cloned out if you want this clean look that I'm going for. Time again isn't what we have here because you really don't want to sit here and watch me clone. And there's another area to deal with, which is down here. Now here you can see this weird pattern of dust. And this is exactly what it is. It is speckles of dust in the atmosphere. Again, because of the extreme strength of the backlight, any kind of dust particles that are in the, the same focal plane as Beth are gonna really glow and show in the shot. Now, I don't mind a few of them. I'm gonna take away some of the brighter ones. In fact, if you wanna get creative, I've got a whole video on how you can use dust in the atmosphere to create some really dynamic portraits on the Adorama Learning Center. So that's fine, but there's another thing I wanted to do, and that was the color in the picture. I need to enhance that. And to do that, I'm gonna go into Camera Raw or Lightroom. So from here, I'm gonna to go to Filter and choose Camera Raw Filter. Now, if you started with Raw Files or Lightroom, you could do this first. There's no set order to doing any of this. But what I wanted to do is have a nice bluish feel to the image. So I'll take the temperature and move it towards the blue end of the shot, like so. And to really enhance the colors, let's come down to the vibrance and increase the vibrance as well. Now that gives me that sort of blue cold feel that I was after, but it's had a bit of a nasty effect on Beth's arms, which have gone a little bit more, well, let's call it magenta, I guess. Now we could try and just work on the arms, or I can take the tint, which has magenta and green, and move it away from magenta. As I move it into the green, that helps to balance up the colors of the skin. They're not correct, but they just feel better. And I prefer that cyan color in the background. Speaking of the background, the very last thing I need to do here is just to get the local adjustment brush, make sure my clarity is all the way up to plus 100 and paint on the background because the entire purpose of this shoot was to see the sparkles on the background. So I'll enhance those to their maximum by increasing the clarity, which just adds a bit more contrast to the scene. And with a bit more tidying up, there it is. My final sparkly sequin shot is completed. So it turns out it wasn't the fabric that was the problem. It was me having an idea of what I could actually do with this stuff. Now, if you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave me a comment below. And if you want to see more videos from myself and the other amazing presenters right here on Adorama TV, you know what you've got to do. You've got to click on the subscribe button. I'm Gavin Hoey. Thanks for watching.